Chúng tôi xin cảm ơn sự theo dõi trở lại của quý vị khán thính giả để tiếp tục chương trình thì tôi xin được tiếp tục buổi phỏng vấn ngày hôm nay với nam tài tử Jack Choi nói về phim Front Cover cũng như là cái sự um, gọi là hoạt động của anh ở bên New York. Um, your character is both a, uh, a stylist and, and gay in, in this film and so I'm just curious how sensitive are the LGBT issues for the Asian community today? Um, I think it's still a sensitive subject mm -hmm. um, within the Asian community and uh, even even within the Asian American community mm. but but I think because people have been so vocal about it in mm -hmm. the past couple of years and with social media mm -hmm. and with more people feeling empowered mm -hmm. to um, not just accept themselves but to speak out against injustice mm -hmm. to the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. um, it's becoming something more that's being talked about but you know Asian especially um, Asian immigrants in America you know they're they tend to still be um, a little more traditional mm -hmm. hold on to their more traditional and conserv conservative um, beliefs mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that you know with films like this and people speaking up more that their minds can be opened mm -hmm. you know and I'm not here to change people's minds I just want to open it mm -hmm. Um, and, and understand and you know be more understanding from their position from, from their our gay friends right. perspective as well right exactly see all the lenses right right um, and I and you know it's great that more Asian Americans now are coming out and being more vocal whether they are LGBTQ or not mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's very important for straight people mm -hmm. to be advocates and allies mm -hmm. and um, to be anti homophobic mm -hmm that helps, you know, you, it's not enough just to be like not homophobic, you have to be anti-homophobic. Yeah. It's just like, it's not enough to be not racist, mm -hmm. you have to be anti-racist. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important. Um, so it's still a sensitive, touchy subject, but I think it's getting better. And I can't tell you if it's getting fast enough, but it is At least it's better. the ball is moving, right? right. It's right. not stand, standing still. Right. And right. when you mention anti-homophobic James character, Chi Ning, I think that's how you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. So his character, he's a famous movie star in China. Mm -hmm. So he comes to New York and your character, Ryan Fu, you know, kind of being put in a position where he have to style this guy. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's at the beginning, you know, like you can see this guy, he's so homophobic, you know? And, and so I often hear, and I don't know how, how true it is, that a lot of people, when they show how homophobic they are, that's mean that somewhat it is hidden inside them that they are gay, but they're afraid to come out. Mm. Do you find that true? Do you know anyone like that, that at the end they came out to you? This is, I've had a couple of conversations about this yeah. with friends. Um, it's called projections on some level, I would say, like, you know. Yeah, I, you know, I, I wish I had a straight answer for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or because uh, I think it's like a psychological thing, right? Mm. You know, um, but I can see it being true. Mm -hmm. I can see it being true because it's like, what's the reason for you to be so repulsed by mm -hmm. something that doesn't directly hurt you? Mm -hmm. And why are you so repelled? Why are you replying it so hard? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's something within you fighting you know, against some, exactly, it. Yeah, some kind In of denial, insecurity. Yeah, right. That you don't know or understand. And I don't know if it's always the case, 100%, where if, if you're homophobic, you're actually gay. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of truth to that statement, you yeah. know, where, so, and in my personal experience, who, let me see. Growing up in New York, right? It's a, it's a pretty open it's, yeah, place. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know Very too liberal. many. Right, exactly. Yeah. I didn't know too many openly homophobic people when I was growing up, even though I grew up in the inner city, um, it, within the hip hop culture, mm -hmm. kind of, and there's a lot of homophobia just ingrained in inner city and hip hop culture, and within actually even sports. I grew up playing basketball, and within sports, it's very like hyper masculine, you know, like kind of like homophobic. But thankfully, none of my friends like gay bash people or mm. like were just so homophobic like that. No. Um, Otherwise, they wouldn't be your friends if they're exactly, like that. Exactly. You yeah. don't want to hang out with people like that. Exactly. For yeah. sure. Even even me, like at seventeen, eighteen, I wasn't so open, openly, and accepting to gay people because that's just how I grew up. And, and now I'm different. But I, you know, if they were so homophobic and kind of like 
discriminate against gay people just because they were gay. Like, I would have been, I would have not been cool with that. So it's interesting because I, I really enjoy watching this film, and I, you know, you learn something mm -hmm. uh, after finished watching front cover. So I do hope a lot of our Vietnamese viewers around the world and in the States will go see front cover. I hope so too. Um, and when you mention about you're such a big fan of sports and basketball, of course, now we're going to shift into that direction because cool. I have to ask you. <laughs> so I did a little research and I found out that you are a big fan of, when it comes to sports, I, uh, I, uh, Iver, Alan Iverson. Alan Iverson, yes. Uh, when it comes to hip hop music, you're a big fan of Tupac, mm -hmm. which I recently found out that I like him too. It took me years to discover that. Mm. And are you a big fan of sports in general besides basketball? Because you know, as we speak right now, the Olympics is going on. Do you mm. find yourself rooting for like Korean athletes or just all athletes in general? You have favorites this year. I, you know, I don't really root for any countries or athletes ex except for the USA basketball team. They're um, doing okay I, compared I, to the last couple Olympics. Right. I haven't really been following the, the USA basketball team this, this time because I've just been really busy. But I've, I've heard and I've read a little that they're having a hard time. Like barely With, beat France by three points last week. Yeah. I'm like, seriously? And Tony Parker didn't even play, by the way. What? You didn't play at all? <laughs> no. He got injured. So I was like, you know. That's bad. And then guess what? Spain lost to a couple of other Croatia teams and some other teams that they think like. Spain. Yeah. Wow. And they have Pau Gasol and all those. They're supposed to be really yeah. good. And, and the U.S. barely beat Serbia, I think. Yeah. Um, um, so, you know, it's, <sighs> I hope they still win the gold. Yeah. But, you know. So now, why Iverson? Why, why do you like him so much? You know, Alan Iverson, he is my generation's Michael Jordan. You know, I related to Alan Iverson so much, you know, growing up in a single family household, mm. um, growing up poor, mm. inner city, um, and being so just outspoken and comfortable with who he is mm -hmm. as opposed to how the the NBA and his endorsers image. wanted him to be the image exactly so he was like you know what forget the image this is my image mm -hmm. you know and I think he so he's real uh, from what I know right from what I know right. I don't know him as personally but right. at least he tried his best to be the real him while working within the parameters of the league and the, all the restrictions that they have you know um, and the endorsements and you know, and I think when you are real, when you're outspoken, and when you are very frank and honest, you eventually, people will respect you. Like a lot of people It might take time though. It, it might not time. happen right away, but right. It, it takes time. Exactly, and it, it, at first people will be turned off, mm -hmm. but people who aren't turned off already respect you and love you, and then people that don't, didn't like you, they will come around and actually accept you, exact, you know, for exactly who you are. And, um, you know, he's one of the big reasons why, you know, I started getting tattoos, mm. you know, and, well, Tupac was the first reason, but he was, he's, he was like the second reason. And um, he was so good, he was so dynamic as, a, as an NBA player too. He was six feet nothing, same height and weight as me, mm -hmm. and was a giant on the court, you mm. know, fearless. Why Tupac? He was one of the first hip-hop artists that I've ever listened to. Mm. Um, before that, I listened to a lot of like uh, Korean music and um, K-pop type. K-pop, yeah. <laughs> really? Like when when K-pop was you first speak started. Korean? Yeah, of course. Oh. Yeah. You want me to speak right now? Uh, sure, if you wanna. Ah, 안녕하세요. Oh yes. 제 이름은 최재익입니다. 반갑습니다. I can say more, but you know. Um, <laughs> But yes. Save for a K drama later. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but Tupac, uh, you know, his songs, there were so many different kinds of songs for different, and there were so many different themes, but I love the songs that were so poetic and mm. also speaking to the single mothers, mm. you know, um, the songs about love and unity. Mm. Like, I love that. And it was hard for me. Peace and har harmony. Peace and harmony, mm -hmm. exactly. And also, there was something very thuggish about him yeah. that. Once bad again, boy look. Right? Exactly, the bad yeah. boy, you know, growing yeah. up, single family household in the inner city, you know, me, like, there was something that I related to within, you know, from that image, but also there was a activistic, artistic, yeah. poetic side to him, Creative. which I really appreciated. Yeah. yeah, and I could go on and on about Tupac, really. Like, we're, Sad we'll that he left us activism. too early at the age of, what, 24? 24, 25? Yeah. 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 I mean, 
quarter, quarter, quarter life, you know, and he's, he's gone. I mean, I can only imagine what this world would be like if he didn't die. What are you doing next? Um, I know you've I'm, been really busy. Yeah, just busy with auditions. Um, got a uh, indie feature film in the works right now. Uh, are you shooting it right now, or you you just finished shooting the indie um, feature film? Um, no, we're still shooting. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Here in LA. In LA, yeah. So yeah. this is the look. It it it, it works for the for the role. Okay. I mean, I, I think I was growing my hair out like a, a year ago. I started growing it out a year ago. Why? Um, yeah, huh? It's so different from the role of yeah. Brian Fu in yeah. front cover. It is, yeah. that clean cut, short yeah. hair. Yeah, six, wait, I'm sorry, eight packs? <laughs> in ten that pack, movie. I don't know, I might have had a ten pack, I don't know. <laughs> I, still got, I still got a couple of packs yeah, here, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm still working on them. But um, yeah, and just auditions and, you know, just living, living in L.A. You know, I, I've been in the city for about two months and some change now, and I'm liking it a lot. So you're yeah. bi-coastal now? Yeah, because I'm bi-coastal, yep. yep back and yep. back. Because uh, I have a home base there, representation there too. Yeah. Oh, really? So, yeah. So what's, um, what's your ultimate goal in life now that you're, I found out that you're a vegan and then, you know. I'm pescatarian now. Okay. I know. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, vegans. I just started eating fish again. You need but, some um, fish. You need some protein. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, my ultimate goal in life, I have a couple of goals. Um, one of them, it's really to, I want to have my own animal sanctuary. Mm eventually um, and the other one is just to you know work on helping other people whether it's you know people who, who suffer from poverty mm -hmm. um, or you know sex trafficking you know human trafficking that's something that I really that I really want to get involved in yeah. um, and you know I just I try to volunteer uh, in LA as much as possible I'm, I'm asking some friends and going to the libraries and see if I can volunteer because um, I do volunteer with New York Cares at Oregon New York mm. they're awesome but um, those are my ultimate goals. And also, you know, just be the best actor I can be and, you know, uh, bring visibility to people of color and, um, yeah, just do the best work I can. So would you ever move to Seoul, Korea someday to do K-drama or Korean movies? You would if, be perfect. They would def definitely gonna like promote you to be like a list actor in Korea. I mean, if Korea will have me, yeah, um, I would. Yeah. You know, uh, I haven't been to Korea many, many years, so that's always definitely you know uh, in the back of my mind. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Jake. Congratulations. Thank and, you so uh, much. Hope you don't mind come back down here next time. Oh, for please next have movie. me again. Oh, absolutely. Please have me again. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come to me Oh, um, come on. <laughs> come on. Konggachi. Konggachi. You're welcome. Konggachi. Uh, oh, doi konbie. Doi konbie. Uh, I don't know. Không có chi mình you're welcome. Ok, got it Không now. có chi. Ok, yes. got it. Dạ vâng thưa quý vị, đó là buổi nói chuyện đặc biệt của Tô Uyên với nam tài tử Jake Choi về cuốn phim mới nhất của anh hiện đang trình chiếu tại một số dạp tại vùng Bắc Mỹ. Thưa quý vị, đó là phim mang tên Front Cover. Đến đây chúng tôi xin trân trọng kính chào tạm biệt tất cả quý vị và xin kính chúc tất cả quý vị có một ngày thật là hạnh phúc và bình an.